I have no idea if that's going to go away. Oh, it will. Yes. Hi. <laughs> My name is Ben Vincent. I'm presenting Restful Sheets. Uh, they're all slides, because you'll see in a second, it's a database, kind of? A database is a bit of a strong word, but at any point, I'd like to thank ExchangeJS for hosting this and Startup Edmonton. I don't think anyone's here from Startup Edmonton at any point. I'd like to thank them for hosting us. And so to begin, I'm going to talk about how this is MVP friendly. And I'm going to show that by giving you an example of when I wish I'd had something like this. I'm going to talk about how it's easy to re-implement, deploy, and use in maybe not production, but definitely in staging and definitely in kind of an early MVP. And then lastly, I'm going to compare it to other solutions because, well, you'll see. So first off, I'd like to show you, oh, I have no idea why that didn't work. I changed slides, but my computer did not. Whatever. Uh, I'm just going to quickly switch over to Google Sheets because this is not actually working. Yeah, at any point, I'm going to talk to you about Boreal Matrix. And this is the wrong account because eight accounts is definitely the best way to split up your users. Nope, this is the wrong thing at all. Come on, slides. That one. Hey, and we're back. full screen this. Oh, there it is. Well, that's lame. Any point, Boreal Laser. So Boreal Laser, I had to do some work for them to make an app. They sell laser-based gas finding detection and analyzation. I don't know about you, but that's kind of complicated. It's basically split up by gas, by product, and by distance. They asked me to help design an app that would basically teach their distributors how to build this. Like basically it's set up with a whole bunch of different parts. They assemble it, ship it to these people, and then they do whatever they want with it. It's mostly business to business sales, but they also do some university stuff for different studies. Um, the problems that they ran into is that this is a really complicated product, and they were dealing with people who didn't really, like that wasn't their main focus. Their main focus was sales. They didn't care that this thing could tell you what the CO2 concentration at a thousand meters was. They didn't even know how to set that up. So my job was to go in and be like, okay, how can we make this easier? So what I came up with, it's a multiple choice quiz. Simple solution. But the tricky part was is that I didn't want to know how this worked. I didn't care. And as a developer, most of us don't really care about the domain so much. Our problems are all software. We want to look at something and be like, okay, I don't want to have to learn this, but because I've got much bigger problems. I've got to figure out how to scale this, how this is going to run in all the different browsers, because IE sucks. Um, all these different problems that really we care about, but no one else does. And then all these other problems that our clients care about, but we don't. So enter Boreal Laser and enter a multiple choice app. Now my solution was a spreadsheet. I was literally like, okay, I don't really want to have to know all these multiple choice questions. All I'm going to do, you're going to fill out a spreadsheet. I'm going to tell you to fill it out. Bam. I'm just going to parse that and then make a multiple choice quiz out of it. Problem solved. The tricky part was, is I didn't, it was kind of complicated to actually get the spreadsheet to show up. I ended up solving it, but enter RESTful Sheets. So RESTful Sheets is literally exactly what it sounds like. It's powered by... Well, I'll talk about that in a second, but it's exactly what it is. It's a RESTful interface for a Google spreadsheet. It's kind of a database. So it's powered by AWS. We use serverless Lambda because it's free, and I didn't want to have to pay for it. My boss, my clients don't want to pay for it. So yeah. Uh, GitLab uses for repo and for their CI. So in my case, it's... There's a repo. You are all welcome to fork it and take photos of it, do whatever you want. 
uses CI for staging and development environments so that way you don't have to worry about accidentally messing up production. Uh, serverless, which is this thing over here. And then last but not least, Google Sheets, our beloved database backend, which funny enough is probably, it's super useful for what it does. And what it does is, well, it stores data. So in my case, literally we're using, we're using serverless as our in-between. So serverless lets us take, in this case, we're using its, uh, the API gateway on AWS Lambda. So basically, I say, okay, I want a URL when you perform this uh, action against this URL, in this case a get, because this is one way. We're not, I didn't, ha this doesn't handle posts, at least not yet, because you don't, yeah. So you do a get, you fetch your data, in this case, it's just a simple ID, title, description, all sorts of different things, and it spits out JSON. Simple enough, easy to use, and like, to be honest, most of the times when you're starting with like a simple project, like trying to make a multiple choice test, you don't need anything. Like, I looked at doing MongoDB, and I'm like, how do I get my client to fill this out? Like, I don't want to parse through this. I don't want to have to spend all my time writing scripts and double checking his work. I'd rather just tell him, okay, here's this, when you enter stuff over here and refresh over there, it's done. No work, no hassle. I, I get to focus on why IE doesn't work, because IE and React. So in this case, I'm just going to quickly kind of go over this. So RESTful Sheets, it's free. Uh, MongoDB Atlas is what I compared this against to, just because I picked, like you could just as easily compare it against Firebase. I think that one, the first tier, you have to pay for anyways. But at any point, the free tier is what I decided to compare it against because this is all about lean development. They're both free, except Mongo Atlas, if you go over, you start to pay money. Most first goes at an app or a website, you probably won't go into that. Uh, Spreadsheets are allowed 10,000 lines before they lock you out, or they stop you from adding stuff, at least. MongoDB, it's 512 megabytes, so that's definitely more, but like, again. So the cool part about Google Sheets is there's version control, which is probably the most useful part, because when you expose something to a client or expose anything to anybody, business, who doesn't care about how things work and they just want it to work, version control will save you so much hassle because suddenly when they make a change, you can be like, oh yeah, I can see that change that you went through. You broke this. And when I first did this for Boreal, I was like, oh yeah, just send me the changes. I'll do it manually. Well, suddenly 15 email chains down the line, especially after like you stop answering in like the first three. So now you're like backtracking being like, okay, wait, well, what, what did you ask like two emails ago? What did you ask what? It's it becomes such a pain in the butt. And like, if anyone ever has made those requests to a developer and been like, why isn't the developer doing this? It's because they're busy? Or it's because, I don't know. In my case, I was actually working on a different job, so whatever. But still, if you can go in and edit them yourself, way nicer. Mongo doesn't have a version control, at least not built in. You'd have to add it, but you know. So now, technically, this is the, a weird comparison, but Mongo ha is queryable because it's a database in a database language. Google Sheets is semi queryable. You can, as part of the implementation, you could set it up so that like you can query a table and row, or a sheet and a row. Chances are, things are going to change because your clients could be like, "Oh wait, I want this, I want this question to go before that other question," and if you set it up in a sane fashion, it might still work, but if you haven't, then things are gonna go all out of hell and you're just gonna have to pull the whole sheet at once. I mean, like, there's worse things that could happen, but at any point. Lastly, easy to use. So if you tell somebody to pull up a spreadsheet that you've emailed to them, and be like, yeah, here's the link, pull this up, go and make your edits, and then refresh the page. There obviously going to be like, okay, I know how to use this. If you send them uh, an IMA, yeah, IMA, uh, 
like login. So like if you're on AWS or Google Cloud, or maybe think Atlas also has some sort of a user system that lets you make guest accounts. I don't know if you can. I don't even know that you can make direct edits online. Probably not. They're not going to know what they're doing, and it's going to be you who has to fix it. And I don't know about you guys, but I'm kind of lazy, so I'd rather just be like, yeah, if you guys could go ahead and fix this while I'm busy doing different problems, that'd be great. So yeah. I could show you kind of, like, the actual system is pretty straightforward. It's literally just fork the repo. There's a whole bunch. It's all perfectly well documented of install, deploy, release. Uh, there's a readme. I'll include that. Uh, oh. I guess there's no questions, but either way, if. Feel free to send me an email or try to fork it and run it. It runs on serverless, so it's all free for your first million requests. After that, it's your next million costs you one twentieth. It's either twenty cents or one twentieth of a cent. I can't remember which. This is yeah. Uh, it's pretty cheap. And uh, yeah, it's basically it. I could show you like the actual code, but looking at code is boring, and it's a back-end service, so there's no real reason to. Unfortunately, it's not nearly as pretty as Eugene's map. Like I, I could never make something like that. I'm like, I, I do basic stuff, but back end stuff, I'm knocking out of the park. Yeah. Thank you very much. Uh, did you want a question? I don't know. I. Actually, I don't know if it's gonna. I kind of wanted to see it. That's all. No, sure. I'd love. I'm happy to show it. It's pretty straightforward. I should probably shut that off. I guess it's not too bad. Yeah. So as you can see, I've been hard at work the last few days, <coughs> waiting for GitLab to work. So yeah, it's pretty straightforward. Uh, basically, you have your config file, which determines. In this case, it does a couple of things. So uh, this implementation, if you're using AWS, it will set up staging and production endpoints. It handles local de development. This is all documented in the make file. So all the commands are there. Don't need to really know how it works. It'll just kind of, it'll work mostly. Um, you, ha you have to define handlers. So those are your functions. And those live in the source, which this is written because AWS is weird about their Lambda functions. It's written for Node 6. They just really, actually, they just released version 8, but there's still, like, that's only async and await. So yeah. So yeah, this is just like what it looks like. You just export a function, and literally all I did was hard code the name of the sheet, and then a range to get. So uh, your starting, I guess, uh, column and your ending column, and then it'll just fetch everything that has a value. So it pulls everything at once from every sheet. Each sheet is a table, and yeah, no, it's not. Hopefully, like I don't. I've been working with this in my spare time for probably like a little over six months. So like. I've spent a lot of time trying to figure out how to make all this stuff work. So to me, it's like, oh yeah, this is straightforward, but maybe it's not. Hopefully, if any of you are interested and or do build something that involves not a lot of heavy backend, uh, feel free to send me an email, fork it, try to run it. It's hopefully straightforward. Just test even. I mean, go ahead. Well, like, the questions, sorry, that was maybe, that was just an example. So, like, I'm using this to build a food app. So, like, when, I don't know about you guys, but whenever I'm gearing up to make dinner, I'm trying to figure out, okay, what foods do I have? Let's double check with, like, what can I make? So, like, I'm using this to make that. So, literally, the data 
could just be, you know, I think I've got a sheet even ready. Like the data can literally just be whatever you want. It doesn't have to be questions. In my case, like my example that I was talking about was questions, but like I think if I go, I have one or the other. So like, I think it's this one. I can't remember. Oh no, this one was not it. At any point, I've got lots of spreadsheets, so I'm having troubles. But you're like the idea isn't that like basically you fill in the data and it's just meant to be a user friendly way of like, okay, here's all this raw data. I don't want to have to spend all my time like typing it out in jQuery or some sort of insert statement for SQL. Or not jQuery, sorry, uh, JSON and some sort of insert statement for uh, SQL. I just want to kind of like copy paste and add to it as I go. Because like recipes, it turns out, on the internet are not tab friendly tab row or row column friendly. It's like, okay, how do I take this and, you know, fix it? But it ain't good. Uh, All right, then maybe we'll cut it off there. Yeah, okay, probably thank you very spot. much. Thank you very much. ExchangeJS is Edmonton's JavaScript meetup. Thanks to our sponsors, Jobber and Investopedia. Support the meetup and like and share this video, and stay informed by following us on Twitter and meetup.com. Links in the description. See you soon!